With housing prices out there being higher than they've ever been in history, people are starting to wonder how can there be foreclosures if housing prices are so high and so many sellers and homeowners have so much equity due to the magnificent real estate boom we just experienced. Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain a few scenarios of how this could possibly happen because so many people out there seem to think it's impossible that someone could go into foreclosure when they could potentially have this much equity and people have seen this amount of appreciation in such a short period of time. Now I'm gonna start with with an actual real life example of a property that I found in Sausalito, California. And I happened to just find this by accident because I like looking at real estate in this area. You know, I'm a fan of uh, Northern California and eventually I'd like to have a summer home there. I just look for real estate there for fun right now just to see what's out there, what things cost and whatever. And to my amazement, I came across a foreclosure property and as soon as you see this listing, you would not think that it's a foreclosure. So let's take a look at it. So here we have a three bedroom, three bathroom home, magnificent views, and it's almost 2,600 square feet. They're asking $2,750,000 for this foreclosure. So if it's a foreclosure, that means it's a bank owned property. So the bank has already taken possession of this home, okay? Now let's take a look at this listing. This doesn't look like a typical foreclosure, if you ask me. I mean, most of the foreclosures that I dealt with during the last real estate crash were properties that were completely sucked dry, okay? Every single thing that you could possibly think of would be removed, the walls were beaten up, the bathrooms were disgusting, and this property, as you can see, is completely the opposite of that. This place looks pristine, and it just looks like a magnificent property, right, overall. And then to top it off even further, if we go down and look to see how much this person paid for this property in the past, this is the real shocker. Now look at this. In 1998, they paid only $756,000 for this property, which in today's money looks like a joke, right? Especially when the current price is over 2.7 million. So my thing is, how can you have a property that you bought you know, 20 some years ago for a fraction of what you could sell it for today and somehow go into foreclosure. You've quadrupled how much the house is worth in about 20 years. How can this even happen, right? That's my question as well. And a lot of people out there are wondering how can a situation like this happen? The simple answer is it's not so simple. There's a lot of different ways someone could end up going into foreclosure with a home like this. So one of the ways could be maybe they use their house like a piggy bank, like a lot of people have been doing with so much equity going up, especially with a nice home like this in the Bay Area that is consistently appreciated over the years. If you look at Zillow's Zestimate history here, pretty much ever since they bought this property, it has steadily gone up in value over the years to where it is now at an all-time high. And you could even theorize that someone like this that bought this property back then definitely is not a millionaire, right? They didn't pay 2.7 million for this property, so they're probably just an average person that was in the right place at the right time, made enough money to buy this home, and probably used that home as a piggy bank for many years, you know, taking out lines of credit against the property because the value kept appreciating, or doing cash out refinances every so often, and just sucking all the money out of the property and then using that money to fuel a luxurious lifestyle. And eventually what happens is they cannot pay the bills anymore because if you're taking out more and more debt on a property that's worth more and more and more, look where this person could be at right now looking at a monthly payment. If you were to buy this home right now, it would cost you a little over $14,000 a month with principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. But I'm willing to guess that when this person bought this property, it probably didn't cost them more than about $4,000 a month. So that gap between $4,000 and $14,000 a month for a monthly payment is massive. So that's one way this person may have went into foreclosure. The other reason that this person could be going into foreclosure is that maybe they had some recent hardships, you know, maybe they have medical problems and, uh, you know, had to use most of their money to pay for, you know, medical bills or some unforeseen hardship, let's say, a divorce, who knows. But 
I doubt that's the reason because the thing is they do have so much equity in the property that they could borrow a little bit against it to catch up so to speak. Let's say they do that and they end up where they're not making enough money to make that new payment because it's higher than that 4000 Like say they did some kind of refinance deal or they pulled some money out, they have a line of credit and now their new payment is let's say 7000 you know, almost double what it used to be, but now most of their income is going towards that unforeseen expense. This person can no longer afford to pay for this beautiful home. And as you can see, they've done a nice job maintaining it over the years. They have bought some very nice furniture they have kept the place in immaculate condition the kitchen looks brand new there's a lot of premium features with this home you can also bet that this person sunk a lot of money into this property over the years as well and this is just two scenarios of how somebody could be going into foreclosure in today's hot housing market now let's take a look at a second example of how somebody could be going into foreclosure here's another listing that i found now we're looking in southern california on the pacific coast highway so this property is literally right across the street from the pacific ocean you can see the building is there and the beach is right across the street looks like a pretty decent condo building you know nothing super fancy this property is definitely not as nice as the last property that we looked at and obviously it's a lot cheaper you know it's a one bedroom one bathroom it's got a balcony they're asking eight hundred thousand dollars for the property now this property is not a foreclosure but I want to show you a scenario of how this could become a foreclosure in the near future. If we go and look at this property, you can see that the person who owns this property literally just bought it. As of recording this video, today is May 1st, so only two months ago, guys, that this person bought this property for $735,000. And now, the same property is back on the market for $799,000. So what this person is doing, obviously, is they're trying to make a quick buck by purchasing this property and trying to turn around and flip it during a really hot housing market, banking on the fact that someone else is gonna come in and take over this property. However, this might not work out in this person's favor, especially since sales are starting to slow down Mortgage applications are down, interest rates are up, and foreclosure starts are up as well. So between all of those things, it's becoming less and less likely that this person is going to be able to flip this property because there's just simply less buyers out there who can actually afford to buy this home. And if anyone is smart and looks at exactly what we're looking at here right now, that this person literally paid $60,000 less for it, they did nothing to it, they didn't remodel it. As you can see from the pictures, it's got a very old kitchen. You know, there's nothing special about this property. Let's take another look real quick. Yeah, you can even see, look, they didn't even clean up the balcony. You can see how dirty it is out there. The bathroom is sort of new, but the kitchen itself is very old. It doesn't even have a refrigerator. The floors in here look very, you know, worn out, things like that, okay? So this person who bought this property literally did nothing to the property besides buy it and then turn around, put it on the market for sale, hoping that someone else would come along and pay more than they did for it. Well, this is the perfect example of how someone could go into foreclosure because they did this at the top of the housing market and things are starting to cool off. They might not be able to flip this property. So it looks like it's empty right now. It's not being rented. So that's already two months of vacancy, two months of carrying costs that this person has lost on this property. And I don't know how long this property could potentially sit on the market if it will sell or what will be the story with it, but I'm gonna save it just to watch it and see what's gonna happen to see how long it takes to sell and to see how much it actually ends up selling for to see if this person's gonna be able to get away with it. But here's another potential scenario that I wanted to explain of how someone could go into foreclosure. They buy a property hoping to make a quick buck, flip it. Meanwhile, they're paying for all the carrying costs because it doesn't make sense to rent it, especially if you want to flip it because you don't know if the end user will be an investor or you know somebody who wants to live in the property. So renting it could be risky and could eliminate certain buyers. So the longer this person has to hold on to an empty property and pay this 
$4,600 a month or maybe less if they paid cash, but still we're talking probably at least $2,500 a month with all the carrying costs. They can end up going into foreclosure if it sits empty long enough and they don't have the money to pay for keeping this property empty in the hopes that they end up selling it. So this little flip that this person's trying to do could end up backfiring and they may end up going in the foreclosure or if the market takes a downturn, maybe they will end up being able to get away with a short sale instead. Now, one more big example I want to give in this video is a recent scenario where a lot of people decided not to pay their mortgage. They went into some sort of forbearance program during the pandemic that was offered to them. However, what a lot of people didn't realize when they went into the forbearance program is just how hard it would be to catch up on the payments afterwards. Because the thing is that people didn't realize is that even though you're not paying the mortgage, the interest payments are still due and they're still being accrued while you're not paying in that forbearance. And then when it comes time to start paying for your property, you now owe more on the property than you did prior to the forbearance because all of that interest is being accumulated while you are not paying for the property. And I bet you a lot of people did not realize when taking the forbearance that they would be still accruing additional interest on the property. And say folks that took out the forbearance, you know, have been not paying for the last year, year and a half, you have an extra year and a half worth of interest due on your property. And if you were already one of those people who was in financial trouble prior to the pandemic, which you probably were if you took the forbearance, now you're in real big trouble. You weren't making enough money as it was to be able to afford that home or you lost your job because of the pandemic and then you took the forbearance so now all of a sudden you have all this extra debt on the property that you previously didn't have before the pandemic or if you did have that debt you added even more to it and now even with these tremendous equity gains you still owe more on the property than you can either pay back or than how much the property is even worth therefore putting you into a foreclosure or potential short sale scenario but a lot of people were asking in my previous video if things are going so well if people have made so much money in the real estate appreciation over the past couple years how could anyone be going in the foreclosure right now? And I hope in this video I gave you guys some really solid scenarios and some understanding of how people could still be going in the foreclosure during this hot housing market. And if you want to know more about what's happening with foreclosures right now and the housing market, then check out this video right over here and I'll catch you guys over there.